We are looking at the grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology Paper 1 or PREC exam from November 2022. And this is video three of our web series where we look at the third question, which is the Excel question. So question three and four tend to be the spreadsheet question and just some things to take note of is that all calculations and functions are in the spreadsheet. So we must use the formula functions for all calculations spreadsheet. We must use absolute cell reference only where necessary if we want to copy values down and we must do it in such a way that they will be correct even if the values are changed. That's key there. And we can use the building blocks to do our calculation if we so want. And so they talk about the spreadsheet called Three Tourists, which I've opened already, contains data about spending of South African tourists during in trips to Etogane and its surrounding areas in 2020 and 2021 and so we're going to work now this is a little tip make sure that you are on the right worksheet because there could be multiple worksheets so if I open up the spreadsheet you'll see that there's a chart and a data we are on the data one so we are on the correct one that's good and let's start with question 3.1 3.1 says format a3 to appear exactly the same as a19 so a3 must appear exact the same as a19 if i come down here to a19 you see what it looks like now you could take note of all the features or we could just copy the format using the format painter and then if i come here and just click on that block now it's copied every single one of those features so we've changed the format to that so it looks exactly the same that was pretty easy that's why it's only one mark then 3.2 format a4 to g4 to display as this block over here so we want it to look like this so what do we notice there's a black border around it they are all centered both in the middle as well as the top middle and bottoms is centered both aspects and the text wraps so those are things that i would take note of so let's see what we have to do in our spreadsheet so this is the values that we want to change those are the ones and we want to format it so that they appear in the middle so i'm going to come here to its alignment over here so we want it to be more in the center as well so that's the one thing and the other thing it's already wrapped so we don't need to worry about that but we do want those big black borders to apply to the cells so we want some black border so let's select the text and we are going to i'm going to format those cells so I'll right click and format them and over here we can go to border and make sure that we use a nice thicker border all the cells i'm going to go both outline and inside do something along those lines so there we go so that looks a little bit more in line with what they want it's only two marks so i'm assuming it's just the borders and aligning it more at the top that seems to be more of what they want if it's only two marks okay so 3.3 eight job opportunities are created for every 100,000 that tourists spend on accommodation insert a formula in b18 to determine the number of jobs that were created so for every 100,000 there's eight jobs round off the answer to the next whole number we must round up to the next whole number not the not round off to a whole number but to the next one so if it's 3.2 it must round to four basically we want to do this in b18 so i'm coming out to b and we go all the way down to 18 over there and if you remember it is a hundred thousand that i spent on accommodation so remember that so if i scroll up here that's the accommodation one so it's based on that so we're going to say equals to this block divided by a hundred thousand will tell me how many hundred thousands were spent so there were seventy six hundred thousands that were spent but for each of those hundred thousands we are going to get eight new jobs so i'm going to multiply that answer by eight to get an answer of 601 and if we just see what it looks like it might actually have decimal values there so you can see there's got some decimal values we want to make sure that it's rounded up they specify that we must round off the answer to the nearest whole number which means we must round it up so what i'm going to do is in front of the equal to sign i'll say round up in this case you could use round around down in other questions but this one they want to round up so you put round up in front of the equal to sign open bracket and then at the end of your calculation that's why i always do my calculation first then you put a comma and how many decimal places so we want the nearest whole number which means to zero decimal places close the bracket so it is equals to round up open bracket and at the end we go comma zero close bracket so that it rounds up to the nearest whole number so there we go i think that would be correct for that question so let's move on to 3.4 the monthly total in column g is calculated by adding the amounts in each column b to f if a cell in one of the columns is empty the cell in g4 must also be empty insert a combination of functions in g5 to display the total spending for the month of january which will leave the cell empty if any data is missing and then we must copy that down to g6 to 16 so let's go have a look so we're looking at g4 so 
we are going to add up all those values and then we'll display that answer. But we only display that answer if there's none of them that are blank. Like in this case, you'll notice that there's a blank. So this must be left as blank as nothing in it. So how do we do that? Well, there are two possibilities. It's either blank or it's a sum. So that's, that's an if statement. So I'm going to say equals if. Now, how do I know if I must leave it blank? Well, if there is a blank. So how do I know? Well, if there's one of those cells is a blank. Now, there is a count blank function. Count blank. And if the count blank of all these cells for January, which is B to F, that's what they said. So look there, count blank of B5 to F5. If that is greater than zero, that means we have a blank cell somewhere over here. Then we don't want to display anything. So I'm going to put double quote, double quote, the, the empty cell, nothing. That's what I'm going to display. But if count blank is equal to zero, which means their values for all of them, then I want to sum all those values. So I'll say sum of B5 to, to F5. So there we go. So let's look at it again. If the count blank of those cells is greater than zero, that means one of them is blank and display nothing. If it's not equal to zero, which means they all got values, then we will sum those values together. So that's the formula that I'm going to work out. on. So I think that's correct. Let's copy it down and we should expect these ones over there to be blank when we copy them down. And there we go. You can see there's a blank there. There's a blank there. There's a blank there. You could have also done it over here and worked it out in little stages and worked out the sum and so on. You could have also use these to help you with your calculations if you didn't want to do it in one go. So I think that formula is correct. So don't forget to copy down because I think there will be a mark for that as well. So 3.5, apply conditional formatting to F20 to F31. So let's just select those cells. F20, so scroll down a bit. F20 to F31, so those blockies over there. We must apply conditional formatting with a blue fill when the amount of shopping in a particular month in 2021 is greater than the amount of shopping in the same month in 2020. So we're going to make it blue if this month is greater than the same month in 2020. 2020. So let's look at what we're going to do. So we've selected those cells and we're going to come here to conditional format. So if that cell is more than that cell, then this must become blue. So we're going to go to conditional formatting, go to manage rules. Let's see if there's any rules there. There's no rules. So we're going to have a new rule. So what do we want? We're going to base it off if this cell's value is greater than we now we've selected everything. But I'm going to just select January over here. So over here, I'm going to click greater than that particular cell. Now you notice that it does absolute cell references and it puts those dollars there. So then what it's going to do is, is it's going to check if February is greater than the January, if March is greater. But I want it to copy down. When I say January here, it must refer to January there. If I refer to February here, it must refer to February there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out that absolute cell referencing. So when this formula is copied down, the conditional formatting is copied down, it will refer to f5 for the first block but the next block will be to f6 and then it should match up with those months as it is and if that's the case then we want to change the format to a blue fill so we can change the fill to a blue color that one let's make it a bit lighter so we can at least see the information and go okay so let's see what it does if we say okay boom if the cells value is greater than f5 we removed the conditional formatting we removed the absolute cell referencing so that that f5 becomes f6 f7 as we copy down so let's go Okay, boom. And we can see that that value is more than that. And we can see that one three is bigger than that. And that's obviously bigger than the blank and so on. But in this case, 1.8 million is less than 2 million. So it doesn't go blue. So I think it is working. So there we go. That's how we did it. So when you select all the cells and we apply the conditional formatting, remember we wanted those values to copy down. So that's why I removed those dollar signs. Now let's go to the chart worksheet for 3.6. So click on the chart over here where there's a chart already. And the graph shows a comparison of spending on food and beverages for every month of 2020 and 21. Modify the chart to appear as shown below. So we want it to look like this. I want to make it a bit smaller so we can see everything. So there we go. The series values were incorrectly applied for 2021. So if you look over here, you can see that the data is 1 million and just under 1.5 million. But if you look at this diagram, you can see that that value is correct. That seems to be fine. That seems like the values for 2020. But this value for 2021, one, this orange line is way too high. So the data over there, I think, is incorrect. That's referring to A20 to A31. 
So I'm going to click on that data. I'm going to format that particular date. So let's go select the data. And I want, there's something wrong with 2021. That's the problem. So I'm going to click on edit it. So we can see that the series name is fine, but the data is D20. Let's go look at what that is. D20. Ah, it's those values, which are, it's not the food and beverage. That's the domestic. So that needs to change. So we don't want to do those. So I'm going to click on that and say, we don't want those values. We want these values. Because if you remember correctly, this is the food and beverages. So we've changed it to that. So if I click back and click okay let's see okay so that looks a little bit more respectable compared to what we want that looks a bit better then the next thing that we want to change is you'll see it's 2020 and 2021 and over here you can see it says food so that's also a problem with the name of that food value so we don't want the word food as that label so we don't want the word food we want it to equal to 2020 so i'll change that to 2020 so that it will label it as 2020 and 2021 so that's a little bit better there i'll be getting there i think that's two changes there's probably five changes in total so we've done two of them use that as a guideline and then if i come back you'll notice that the legend is at the bottom there i think our legends on the side there so we're going to change that legend so i'm going to click on that legend and we can actually come here to the side actually click on the plus and we can, if you go to legend it says we do want the legend but we don't want it on the right we want it at the bottom so if i change it to the bottom you'll see that the legend is now moved from there to there so that's the third change that we've done and then let's look at the bottom you see those labels at the bottom they look very different to that it's almost like at an angle so we want to change that so i'm going to come here to the axes that is the x axis so we're going to change the axes let's go to or the horizontal one we're going to go to more options Let's see what more options we've got for the horizontal axes. So we want to change the text of this axis. So I'm going to change the text options. And if I come there, I don't want to change the full. I don't want to change any shadow. Maybe it's to do with the alignment. Let's see if we can do the direction. Maybe the direction is we want to. We don't want that direction. We want a custom angle. We want it as a slight angle. So I don't know what angle is best. It's almost between the two. So let's try do 45 and see what it does. So 45 makes it go that way, which is the opposite to what we wanted to do. So let's try do it negative 45 and see what that does. If I do negative 45, is that better? Negative 45? There we go. So negative 45 looks like it's a better angle for that. So I think that's the fourth thing that we've changed. So I'll be happy with that. And then the only other thing that I can see that might be different is the way that these labels are done. So you see it's one space, a thousand times. So it's something like that. So let's have a look. So you see how these ones are slightly different. So let's go change the vertical axes labels. So the axes, we're going to click on the axes and go to the vertical option, more options. So let's go and look at the vertical axes labels and we want the text options over here so we want to change the value so let's have a look over here let's see we've got those values all seem fine we want to change the number maybe it's the format so the number format we want to use every hundred thousand must be a separator so let's try to do that see what that does and my, yep there we go so if we do that you see it puts a little gap between that i think that's the fifth one that was quite a tricky one to have to do but that seems to be the fifth one so one was the data range two was 2020 instead of the word food and then we moved the legend here for three change the angle of the horizontal axis to an angle and then we added a separator we added a little bit of a gap between those values i think those are the changes that you need to do to the chart let's have a look it looks like it's spot on i think we did five changes so save it and now we can move on to the final excel question for the links to the videos, for the other questions, as well as the data files, go to the video description. Support the channel by clicking on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, share us with your friends. Follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.